brand new monster, Kid the Water Hacker, TLDR, he is a budget Veronica. He's got a very similar third skill to Veronica, the Light Battle Angel. However, it only increases the skill cooldown by two turns of the selected target. It's not a full AoE cooldown increase, but it is a full AoE strip. He also has the second skill, Irresistible Effect, is a brand new debuff on all enemies for one turn. Unfortunately, it's one turn, not two turn. But we do also get the Absorb the Attack bar by 30% each, with a 60% chance. Goes up to 80% after it's scaled up. The target under the Irresistible Effect cannot resist any types of harmful effects. He's a great unit for a control team. Oh, he also has the first skill that's a uh, brand and the leader skill of a crit rate. Let's see. It's just nice that people that don't have LD5s can actually potentially get this new unit. Let's see what he can do. The online coming out very early. We got uh, Maximilian Envelay. Okay, so plenty of, plenty of LDs here. Plenty of LDs get banned out. Makes logical sense. Let's see who they go for the increased cooldown on. Vertiheal was the fastest one on the team. They go for the increased cooldowns on the Velajul. Volantis didn't cut in yet. All right. Still didn't cut in. And now gets cooldown. And, and gets stunned. Of course. Not the first time I've seen that. The first time I saw the uh, stunning Oliver was uh, unexpected. I'm like, wait, wait, wait a second. He doesn't stun. Right. He's too toxic on Violent, though. I feel like I would be... I would not want to take them off violent. Now they're just going to keep getting all these debuffs, though. They got the defense break on the uh, Vertiheal. Bye bye. They got to do a lot of damage now. Otherwise, opponent's going to. Yeah, otherwise, opponent's going to cut in. And start uh, making a comeback. Because I don't think these units are necessarily really ruined for a ton of damage. So I gotta chip away at them very slow. Okay, Violent Proc. Chip away at them very slowly. Through, like, whatever additionals they have. But they're not multi hit units, so. It's rough. At least they have own advantage over the Masha, so... Okay. Because these hackers are... This one's a support unit as well, right? The... Because the, uh, they just came out, but... The wind one is the attacker. And then the water one is the support unit, so... Yeah, they, they should be okay, as long as logic prevails. But that, that could have gone either way. Nasty LDs on the left-hand side. Maximilian gets banned. Juno gets banned. I thought they were just going to leave the Juno in there and then just deal with her. I figured they would ban the either the Hay Gang or the uh, Vanessa. Also, I didn't think they were going to take turn one with that uh, Yen Hong. I thought that was going to go the other way around. And here comes the Chaos. Provoke and a defense break, okay. So now they're going to take every debuff. They're trying to chip away at that monkey. They do still have the sustain with the Yen Hong. They have a lot of provokes with that, uh, the Dark Slayer. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of provokes, a lot of turn cycling. See, Yen Hong should have her skill three next, so she can at least heal some. Layla doing Layla things. Okay. Yep. And then they just concede. Ooh, Hey Gang already coming out on the left-hand side. And triple puppeteers on the right. Four water units. Well, it's C1, but also it's the beginning of season, so you don't know where these people actually are further on down the line. So Chimera gets uh, cooldown. They have another strip on that side, though. They have the Puppeteer, Fire Puppeteer. All right. Gets the stun. No bomb. They have a lot of bombs on that team, though. They're going to have a lot of bombs, and as long as this actually goes through, they don't have to worry about the bombs getting resisted, which is nice. 
which is someone that likes to use control teams. The idea of not getting your units uh, resisted is so wonderful, but I know that if this was me, I mean, I don't have this unit. I wish I did. I wish I did have the, uh, the water hacker, but I know if it was me, I wouldn't land the first one. I wouldn't land his, uh, yeah. Well, not that, not that attack, the, uh, the skill two. So Chimera's down, which means that this Smicer just got even more deadly. Feels like every other battle is, I'm looking at someone's thumbnail picture of a Corgi. <laughs> Maybe it's just my imagination, I guess. They're still going to take, well, they could take turn one with the Fire Shadow Caster. They could take turn one with, because he's got 120 base speed. I actually thought that that's what was going to happen. They were just going to roll the dice to see if they got the, uh, if the opponent had Wilderins or not. But they did actually take the take the turn one with Kid, who's got only a hundred and uh, only a hundred base speed. Actually, I was gonna say one hundred and four, but that is the that is the other ones. So I I feel like this is game now. With with a comp like this, it's really all who takes turn one. Do they get the debuffs? If they do, then that's GG. Because this ninja can t just take this Masha down as soon as skill 3. Oh, he doesn't even go for Masha. Alright, this looks like some high-level gameplay. I don't know how what rank this is currently. Because like I said, it's uh, close to the beginning of season. But it looks like some, some decent drafting. Gets the glancing on him. It's looking rough. Does Nikki? Oh, she. Oh, she does violent proc. Wow. I was gonna say, uh, she's dead. She's not dead. And here's potentially the comeback. She's like a third health. Yeah, there's three units on this side of the field that uh, that heal right now. Nikki, I mean, Nikki can't go as crazy as she used to be able to. Absorb some attack H. Healing Nikki up a little bit more. Okay, and then she's going to do her AoEs. She's going to take a little bit of damage here from this uh, Kumar. And also, also from the Volantis, I was going to say, but they just concede there. We see some nasty looking LDs coming out on the right hand side. Juno gets banned. Makes sense. There's so many debuffs that are going to come out. That that Dark Mage is such a nasty unit. That is a unit I hate to see in, in drafting. It just, it, it gets ridiculous. A couple of violent procs and it just gets absolutely ridiculous out of hand. And they built her tanky too. You really cannot let her get turns. And we, we could have really seen this unit come out on either side of the battlefield. So just trying just trying to keep that unit's attack gauge down. That's the whole that's the whole strategy right now. Yep. Strip. Yep. Thank goodness, and they don't have to worry about the passive after, because it's going to get revived, possibly from the Shizuka, but they at least don't have to worry about the uh, the passive, because passives aren't active. I mean, passives, that's how passives work. Uh, passives aren't active when it is revived by Shizuka. Wow. Antares pick into that. Not what I was expecting. What gets banned? Nana gets banned. Not the way I thought this draft was going to go. Let's see. Zero day attack. Increase cool times on the ragdoll. Get some glancings maybe. They do not get any glancings. RNG at its finest. Who's going to be the big damage dealer here? It's definitely going to be Rakuni. For sure. It's, it's 
sarcasm. So going for yeah, I, I feel like it's gonna be the uh, the dark macaron. But it, it's really not a crazy amount of damage though that they've got on that side. They're just trying to keep the ragdoll down, or, or try get the ragdoll down. Apologies, they're trying to get the ragdoll down. Glancing, one glancing. They're really not getting the stuff that they. Okay, so at least Antares doesn't get a chance to do his uh, skill too. Yeah, the damage is gonna have to come from this Dark Macron guard. Because aside from that, this uh, Antares is gonna do a lot of a lot of damage with attack power buff, crit buff, additionals, with his multi hits. Invincibility is. Nasty. That, that that dark macaron guard is a pretty solid unit. Turn cycling, immunity, invincibility. Not immunity for the whole team, but that'd be too OP. Then she'd be Chloe. Well, if Chloe did an AOE defense break like uh, dark macaron guard, then that would be very OP. Then <laughs> speed lead, invis. Chloe's already good. Chloe's already good. She's got the speed lead. She's got invincibility. She's got immunity. She's got heals. Chloe's an underrated unit right now. I think people could be picking her so much more than they actually are. Because she got a couple buffs in the recent years. Alright, skill 3. And they just keep going for it. Yeah. GG. Both players trying to take turn 1. And then the Sonya comes out. So they could just snipe out the... Hey gang, they don't even have to ban the hey gang. Yeah, you, you could see that that was their, that was what they were going for. Ooh, high defense hey gang. As you see how much damage he takes from additionals. Nice pivot into a turn two bruiser team. So that is Kid the Water Hacker effectively a budget version of Veronica, the Light Battle Angel. There were some higher level players. I mean, it is kind of early in the season already, so we don't know what kind of runes these people have or where they usually rank. So it's kind of hard to determine from that. But there were some people that are already in the Punisher 3 range that were using it, but they're just deleting their replays as soon as they happen, so it's kind of hard to actually get to them. But anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed I think he's a cool unit. Definitely more excited about these units than the Witcher units, uh, but that's just my personal opinion. Hope you guys enjoyed I'll see you as always in the next one.